move into a time of meditation. What is meditation but to simply stop what we're doing? So we stop this speaking that I was doing. We stop the listening to others as you were doing. And we sit in the stillness. We remember that one presence and one power that I was referring to. And we breathe that breath. We've gotten very instructive about meditation, guided meditation, of breathe the breath of God. And it's really just to remind us that we involuntarily always embody, breathe the breath of God. And there is all the air that we need. I invite you to bring it all the way up systemically to the crown above you and holding the breath for a moment, then let it wash down through you. And if you will, think these, this thought, I am beautiful just the way I am. As you inhale, bring it all the way to the top. I am beautiful just the way I am, all the way down to the bottom. Hmm. The second principle is so simple because you embody that God essence. You embody, beloved, that power and that presence. You are the peace that you breathe into and through each and everything that you react to and respond to or not. You are the kindness that is breathed into and through and as you into each situation before you, even difficult conversations. You are that breath of God, that divine spark living as you. And so as you sit more deeply into your chair for just a time of grounded meditation, I invite you to know that one presence and be with that one presence, knowing that yes, we've We've done things that have been brave, and we've been bold, and we've been bruised. And here we are. I am here. This is me. Thank you, God. Here I am. This is me. As you move into a time of just stillness. And if there are any thoughts that you're holding in this time, just let yourself think, I am thinking. Let's be soft and allowing. And let it go by. And for this time of quiet, this time of tranquility, as it has washed through and into our lives, we say, thank you, God. Just whisper that together as you open your eyes and move your fingers, move your toes, if you're willing to do so, and come back into the room. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. So <laughs> this is an extraordinary time. I'm looking out into a field of faces that I actually can imagine your faces without the masks, and yet you all are masked. And I have stories about what it means when somebody masks, right? They don't want to be seen by me. Something untoward might happen. I don't know. My, the thoughts that I'm holding in that time have had to change. Because people mask now, we're masking because we're in this situation. Together, we're masking to be kind. We're masking to be considerate, to not spread anything other than love to and with each other, right? Those are the thoughts that we're holding, and yet 
you may wake up on any given day or hear uh, the news or get news from family or friends that might bring you into a place that you feel a little unsettled. Yes? We won't do a show of hands on that because I know it's happening. In the book of um, Exodus, the second book of the Bible, Moses is in kind of a tight situation. Because he, um, well, he's being guided by God to lead the people to the promised land. Like his thoughts that he's holding, the words that he says are so impactful that God is assigning him to go. And it says actually in the Bible, Moses, come. I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring forth the people. And Moses says in this translation of the Bible, he says, oh, man, I'm sorry. I, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't free your people today. I'm really busy. I'm like I'm doing all these things. I'm on Zoom meetings. And I've got, you know, I've got services to attend, and I'm so sorry, I, Lord. I, I just can't do that for you today. Don't get me wrong. It sounds like a great thing to do, lead the people to the promised land, but yeah, I just can't do that. Can you relate? Are there people looking to you for just the right words at this time? Are people looking to you to calm them down in the midst of upset? Are there people who are looking to you to say, well, what is it that you think about that? How do you feel about that? How do you calm yourself at a time like this? Show me the way to the promised land. And you and I have to really consider that. Because of what's coming up for us in our heads and, you know, third principle, the thoughts we think really color our world. If what's coming up is, no, I, no, I'm not good enough to do that. I don't know how to do that. I can't tell you because I'm really an upset here myself and I can't. No, and you blow people off. No. Are you doing that? Are you doing that? Probably not. Probably digging a little deeper. And that's what Moses had to do. He was like, he had to dig a little deeper. He was like, well, I, I can't, public speaking really freaks me out. I, I don't want to go to the people and do the public speaking thing. Um, maybe Aaron would do that for me. <laughs> he was, he's pretty good at public speaking. So why don't you call him, you know, just contact him. But no, it was Moses. And what happens for him is suddenly he remembers the burning bush situation. He'd already had that. He remembered that something extraordinary is taking place. If we can see a burning bush, if we can experience a pandemic and not be burned in the midst of it, be able to calm ourselves, be able to meditate, pray, get out and walk in the fresh air, play some sports, not expose people, physically distance, be socially close, right? If we're able to do those things, then we can say, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The Lord has sent me to this very situation right here, right now. This is actually part of why we came here. Obviously, you know, right? Or we wouldn't be here. And so what will you and I do with that? Moses said, okay, I remember the burning bush, and I, there was no consumption taking place, and so I'm going to, okay, I will do that. Bam. Moses said, I'll take that job. And he did, and yet it was a collaborative experience. Because he didn't take the people into the promised land. He took them right to the edge. Right to the edge, as Mary Manny Morrissey says, step right to the edge of the light you see. That's what you can do. In the times when you feel as if you're not enough, step to the edge of the light that says, oh, yes, you can. Step to the edge of the light that says, well, this is time to just be still. This is time to know the truth. This is time to practice the principles. Is this a great time to practice the principles or what? Aren't you glad you have principles to practice? Right? Because they are absolutely applicable. No, 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 no. I bet I didn't take that seminar. I think I needed that seminar. No. You don't need another thing. Because you are made of star stuff, right? And the broken and bruised part, that's the humanness of us. And yes, there is that going on. And you are a divine being of light, here to glow, to glow even more brightly, because you're being, we're being forced by this situation to do things that we never thought we'd do, right? Hello. 
Did you ever think for one moment? No, right? And all the things. I know. 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God did not give you a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power and love and self-control. Oh, my gosh. I want you to sit up a little higher on that one. Roll your shoulders back. God did not give you a spirit of timidity. You can face what's before you to face. Can I face what's before me to face? Yes, I can. I can face what's before me to face. Say that into your mask. I can face what's before me to face. To do so with clarity, focus, ease, and grace, well, that makes all the difference. So this place that sometimes we come from, this human story of us is called, is a magical, mysterious, absolutely, totally made up story called Plom. It's the land of Plom, poor little old me. It's a land that if you're willing to, when you're willing to step into it and you go into it, you can get really lost in that place. There's so many changes, though, taking place for us. Why exist in our minds and our hearts and our bodies in any way in the land of plum? We have been given a spirit of grace and power, and we're able to do what's before us to do. I had a great example of this last Saturday. And I was speaking on Sunday, and my title was um, uh, bold and, I Am Bold and Brave. And it was the day before. And I had signed up for the first 5K that the Gulf Coast runners were going to do. We only had a field of 150. Usually we run, you know, five, ten times that number of people. But they were doing something, experimenting, and had the police out, and we were going to do it so that we, every ten seconds we were let go from the front line, right? And we were spaced six feet apart. We had, like, four or five runners across, and every ten seconds we're out there. And the distance was, like, from here to the parking lot between me and the next runner once, you know, started running. It wasn't any issue about, you know, being safe with each other. It was whether or not we would get out there. It was drizzling. It was so humid. I don't know if you remember. And it was 7 o'clock, a 7 o'clock start. So at 5.55 when I woke up, you know, to the song, You Are the Face of God, I'm like, yeah, and I'm running a race today. And then my human self kicked in and said, oh, man, I do not feel like running a race today. I think I'll just stay in bed. I got up, went to the bathroom, came back to bed. My dog looked at me like, really? Mm -hmm. What's bold and brave about that? I'm sorry, I, I missed that part. <laughs> they communicate with us, don't they? I mean, I was hearing my own voice, obviously. Called myself out a little bit on that one. So I got up, and I got dressed, and I went to the race. And because I went to the race, I got to see the guy who sponsored the race. It was, for, it's a, a, it was um, to benefit SNP, which is an organization that cares for uh, neutering animals, you know, so that, and cares for animals. Got to see Tom, the guy who's the head of that. Got to get caught up on that. Got to meet an attorney who was presenting differently. He's, he uh, is, was in a wheelchair. He was the only wheelchair participant, an amazing guy. He told me he drove himself there. I'm like, what? This is awesome. I lost him in the race, I was, I, I, but at the end, I grabbed a bottle of water for him and I waited for him to come across the line and cheer him on, you know. And I thought, should I, should I open the bottle for him, you know, and then hand it to him? And I thought, you know what, this man is in his 50s and he knows exactly what to do with everything. He has all the gifts, all the answers. This is me. I handed him the bottle, he took the bottle, he had his own special technique, and he drank some water and hydrated himself. You and I are made in the image and likeness of God. But if what we're doing is living in that plum land, we are not, we're serving one of the masters. It says in the Bible, you cannot serve two masters. Have you noticed that? It can't be in poor little old me and be, I am bold, I am brave, I am who I'm meant to be, this is me at the same time. Which one do you want to, where do you want to come from? Where do you need to come from to hold yourself up in consciousness? Where do you choose to come from to hold your beloved, your family members, your world, our earth plane, the politics, the economics, What's taking place in this world? Will you step up as Moses did and say, okay, I'll go. 
Let God guide you. Because we've all been cocooning, right? Quarantining, cocooning. We've all been doing that. Are you changing? Have you felt yourself changing at all? Shifting? Would you say you're changing or transforming? Oh, Rebecca's like, oh, Tracy's got an opinion. I can't hear anything behind the masks. So call it out to me. Are you changing or transforming? A little bit of both, little bit of both right? <laughs> changing is like a chameleon, you know, moving from tan to green, right? And we're going, no, I, don't, I want a different outfit and changing, right? It's a very temporary thing. Transforming, though. Now that's the cocooning we're talking about, right? And it has a whole ooey gooey stage to it. Let's just notice. It has a very ooey gooey stage to it. There is the cocoon. And this butterfly is like not, it's a nebulous state. It's like where you and I are right now. It's not clear what is happening. And yet this butterfly is going through the stages. This too shall pass and reaches the point where not ahead of its time, but in the fullness of time, it's able to drop away the cocoon. Oh, we don't know how long this is gonna last, do we? You know, really, truly, who cares? It's just every day, whether we're masked or unmasked, every day is a day to practice our principles. Every day is a day to say, I am bold, I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me, I wake up, get up, and get awesome. I'm here to wake up, get up, and get awesome. Say that with me. I'm here to wake up, get up, and get awesome. Yes. If you have faith, the size of a tiny mustard seed. Did anybody of you have mustard seeds when you were little? That was really popular, wasn't it? I had little tiny gl um, glass globe. You had that too? Little tiny mustard seed inside there. If we have faith the size of a mustard seed, almost indecipherable, and you do. You have all the faith you need. It's what you're having faith in that matters. If you have faith that you can move through this situation, you have faith that you can share with others that they are doing what they need to do, and you help guide them and hold them in their place where they have all the answers they need, one with God, then you and I move through it that much more boldly. This is me. So the 2017 film that you saw, that, that little cut from The Greatest Showman, that's Kiedel uh, Settle. And she sings that song because she, well, uh, Hugh Jackman, I mean, that was reason enough to see the film for me, I'm just saying. Um, Hugh Jackman, who is the greatest showman, hears about her. His eye, he sees a man who is very tiny and he realizes oh, how fascinated he is by the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs, the big and the little of life. We're all fascinated by that. And he says, no, you know what? These guys deserve to be seen and appreciated for who they are, to bring them out into the public eye so that we can go, we don't have to hide away. Because we have scars, we don't have to hide away. This is me. Are you scarred? Are you bruised? Yes. They say that in those places where we're permeable and that we have sort of holes through our ego and holes through our consciousness, that's where the light shines the most, right? That beautiful, broken, open place. This is me. So he hears that there's a woman who sings like an angel. And Hugh Jackman goes to a, a, laundra, a laundromat kind of place where they're washing sheets. And there are all these sheets up, rows of sheets. And he hears this woman singing. And he's so drawn to the voice. And he comes. And interestingly enough, all he can see are her eyes eyes. It's just sheet covering her. All he sees is the windows to her soul. And he says, that voice needs to be heard. You need to be seen. And then she's uncovered. And she is extraordinary. Extraordinary. With a beard. So what? Bold and brave. Being exactly who she is. And she goes out into the, you can see there's this whole dance sequence that's really cool. That she is done with, oh, poor little me. 
She's finally done with, oh man, I'm sorry. I can't be me today. I'm really busy. I got all those Zoom calls and all those things that I have to do. She didn't go there. She doesn't do that. She had been. We have been. Parts of us have not yet been called forward until now. There are things that you're doing that you didn't take the time to do before and things that you're creating that you did not create before because now is the moment, right? This pandemic is causing each and every one of us to step out. Only I can imprison myself and only I can set myself free. Through the what? Power of God through that one presence and one power that's active in your life will never not be active in your life. You can do anything you set your mind and heart on doing, and you will do it in your way. When you recognize and realize, I'm just here to move toward the promised land. I'm gonna go right to the edge of the light that I see. Ask yourself, do you envision a world where your I am is powerful? I am. Or do you envision a world where your I am is powerless? Sort of that half full, half empty thing, right? Around your I am. And this service here at Unity of Church of Peace begins with all these affirmations. Every Unity Church doesn't do that. You begin with all these affirmations and almost every one of them starts with what? I am, your I am, you claiming that this is me. It is Christ in me who does this work. It is the Christ in you, the light of God in you, shining forth. I am bold, I am brave, I am who I'm meant to be. This is me. God bless you and thank you so much. Because wherever it is that you are, and you, each of us is in a different social bubble, each of us is in a different, uh, you know, we're communicating differently with people than we ever have before, right? Even touch is different than it ever was before. Where you are, the light of God shining through you, because you're the light of God, right? Uh, has not been diminished by this at all. So wherever you are, no matter how dark it may seem, we rely on you. We rely on each other to shine the light right there and right then. Thank you so much for doing that. It makes all the difference in the world. God bless you. Thank you so much, Reverend Diane. It's so wonderful to have you back. This is the time in our service when we get to give from our good back into the community. So I invite you to take your tithes and gifts in your hands and we'll say our blessing together, whether you're at home watching on Facebook or on Vimeo or wherever, YouTube, wherever you're watching, you can click the donate button. We'll be so very grateful for that. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, that this is so. And so it is. Amen.